Folders also seem to be very important for selecting the items to be published. Hey, great point. I didn't even consider that angle. Uh, absolutely. So, well, I think, I don't know what to add to what you said because that's just so important is if you are publishing, then you'll want to consider how, how folders are connected. A good example of that is in my broader note library, which is just this underscore N for note, but here's that light kit. It's not the exact light kit um, that you're looking at, but it is the intact light kit. So I always have access to it. Um, and like if I twirl that down, we see everything. So if I just share this folder, then all this other stuff is still private. All these other notes are still private. How do you differentiate between a map of content and table of contents? Oh, sorry, is LightKit available for download? Yes, it is. Hopefully it's in the chat description. Um, I think Daniel can also re-provide it. Thank you, Daniel. How do you differentiate between MOC and table of contents? You know, I am so happy that this was question 29 and not like, you know, question one. That means that we're all learning this language together and we're really far advanced already. Point being is um, a table of content, I would talk contents, I would consider more of a finalized publication almost. Like uh, a map of content is a super fluid place. I mean, think of Google Maps. <laughs> If you go to Google Maps and you type in Starbucks, you get this augmented perspective on top of wherever you're looking with uh, points to Starbucks. And that's sort of a, a map of content. And then you, know, you can manipulate this data in interesting ways depending on what you want to find. A table of contents, however, isn't meant to, in, in my um, vantage point, a table of contents is when you're ready for that book, when you're ready for the article, when you feel like I'm not changing this any longer, then it kind of becomes, it can kind of morph into a, a table of contents in that way. How can MOCs help a tertiary student write an essay for a university class? Carl, I'm going to, to reference what we did with Joel's question, because I think that's probably the best. I don't remember what I called it because I was just, oh, there it is. Yeah, so I think you you might consider, you know, a top-down perspective. Let me make sure I got your question correctly. Yeah, so if you know your essay or you have an idea of essays, eventually you should create a note, a map of content around the essay and just start seeing where, where your notes are. Gather your existing notes, see where the gaps are. Uh, yeah, because you might be like, oh, there really should be an argument here that I don't have. Um, and, and just kind of start with this. Then you can start actually creating the actual piece that would go out somewhere. Um, a good example of that, let's see, I don't wanna to share too much out of this one, but. Um, so yeah, so I just did this uh, YouTube video, why Obsidian will overtake Rome, G getting a thumbs up there. Um, but yeah, so this is not an atomic note. This is my outputs. And I just have this little metadata at the top with output. But what am I doing here? I'm writing. Like this is just me writing. And that's, that's all it is. But I've pulled all these ideas. But I think something that's important to for, for people who actually want to output and share things is once you get to this thing that you want to share, I don't know if you should have a million links to it because you're you're pulling from what you've already created. And that's that's what I that's what I did here. Now I, I have this notes overflow that kind of will have links for me, but this information. And if I do have links, I'll, I'll want to add, I could probably add a few more links to the metadata section. But what I'm trying to get at is once you get to, okay, I've made my map, which uh, we looked at. I made this awesome map of my essay. Then you got to get, you convert it to output stage, keep the map and then reference it. So in this, in this scenario, I would reference it right at the top. Sorry, this is zoom windows in the way. And I would, 
it's not in this library, but I would put it right here. Let's, let's imagine this was my map. And now it's there for my resource as I'm writing my output. And it's always, those two things are always connected that way. So if I open up my little, I mean, too many different maps. So, but yeah, they're always connected point being. Hopefully that's helpful. Do all of your evergreen notes connect to a map of content? That's a really good question. No, I think it'd be nice if uh, eventually a lot of them did because I, I look at them as little um, waypoints. You know, imagine like if you had a, imagine we were in the future and we could jump and make a 30 jumps to go from one galaxy to another or one solar system to another. So we're like, bang, we're bouncing around. And each of those bounces are kind of like entering into a map of content. Or another metaphor is, imagine there are these big house parties where all of these notes have gathered people having conversations. And by a click, you can jump into a different house party. Uh, that's kind of how I, I also can view a map of content. And that means it's easier to find an evergreen note. But it, because if they're just islands floating around somewhere, you can find it, but it might be hard to, to, to make that happen. 32, I've seen Brian Jenks. Oh yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, discussing the idea of links to empty non-existent notes as a form of tagging. Yeah, no, I, I love that uh, concept. I think I have, let's go to the graph view and existing files only. Let's get rid of that. Let's make this a little bit more viewable. Don't pay attention to this calendar thing, but um, we're looking for purple, purple notes. So that's not included in the light kit. What's a good example? Ah, thought unpacking. That's a, a term that means something to me. Let's keep going to uh, a better concept. Point being is, I can see these notes that haven't been created and then immediately work on these notes. Um, I have a graph, the graph view video on YouTube is probably my best uh, demonstration of how to use non-created notes and different things to, to really spot what you can work on in a hurry. And, and then, yeah, then you can just ping out to ideas and not even touch them. It appears all your notes, you keep all your notes in a central vault. Is that correct? Um, all my notes in a central vault. Yes. No, well, not all my notes. I have my, uh, the archive library that I'm slowly integrating into the Obsidian library, which it requires um, kind of like, I don't know, the, the funnel where everything pinches down and then it enters into the new library. So that stuff is waiting for me to process, but it's still accessible. And that's that was this one. So I just need to kind of make sure that that data is, is appropriate for entry. Um, so I have a like, I would say I have three vaults. I have the light kit, I have my working notes, and then I have my archived notes that I'm slowly bringing in. And I, I prefer just to be down to two, just this public kit and my personal kit, if I could help it. Although for the workshop, we're going to have a vault, which is how we're all connected as, as people and, and top, topically, it's, it's really going to be a cool way to, for us to get to know each other and to understand like, oh, who else used a space photo in their introductory message on, in the chat group? and kind of understand like where our interests are aligned. Daily task management is a burden to me. Can the light kit help? Mark asks. You know, it can, but this is where I'm, I'll, I'll be straight with you is I try my best to keep task management and idea management separate. And, uh, and, and I think it's because task management has low basically no long-term value and idea management does what we can grow these ideas we can evolve just like growing a human being who is growing throughout life we we gain texture and flavor and that's why the idea management resonates and why i don't want to muddy that with with task management so it, it it's my 
it's my feeling that you don't want one app to rule them all. You want to keep Obsidian separate from, or I should say, whatever you're using for idea management, uh, separate from task management. Not to say it can't be done. We can always explore that later too, because I, you know, a lot of people have the same uh, question that you have. So we should explore it and we should figure out uh, best practices. Mike asks, so note titles reflect the level of emergence the note belongs to. Oh, you know, you you certainly can. You certainly can put that in the in the note title. I guess I do have that shown a little bit. Like the MOC is obviously it's a higher order note. But I don't, um, how else can I put it? And then I can also like, if a note's not created, oh, what's a good example? I need to jump into, well, let's just say like in the example where I created a note here, like if I create a non, I'm not going to actually create this note, so garbage. But if I add a little TK or something, I'm not creating the note, but if we look here, we can see it exists as an uncreated note. So in the file name, this is to come in publishing terms. I that that's another reference for me. But I guess you know some of these notes, I don't know. Yeah, I guess they're all basically evergreen. So more or less, yes. And if you want to go above and beyond, I think it's um if you love emojis, you can actually put like, hey, the little sapling emoji icon for any notes that are just like barely started. And then you can create like the, the evergreen icon for your evergreen notes. You can get really colorful with, with that. I haven't. I've seen people that do it and I'm like a little jealous on the inside, but also I, I feel a little like it's not as future proof for my purposes because I don't, I'm not comfortable with emojis and like searching for them. So, but yeah. That's a that's a, actually a, a astute observation there. Does anyone okay? So we're on the home stretch. I'm going to try to get this done in ten minutes. Um, does anyone have knowledge of the timeline for mobile Obsidian apps? Uh, no, uh, no knowledge here. I know it's not going to be like this fully fleshed out app, but it will be a place that you can access your information. If you go to the Light Kit and just check this out. It gives you a flavor of what that mobile app might look like, just in how it functions, how, how quick it is. Um, so that's something to check out. What's the difference between spaces and vaults, George asks. Spaces is uh, a term that, that I just chose to, to put here, but it could be, you know, you could actually call this projects or pro projects and then decide that that's where you want your, your projects to to be or you could call it workspaces or whatever you know and that's where it's important to get a sense of information that you do not mind having somewhat siloed somewhat uh, separate from the rest of your 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 information because you know to access that you'll have to click into it to see everything um, since if you're still around right now, I feel like maybe I can show you a little bit more from this other kit. So in my personal notes in spaces, so I have light, like this is sort of a new venture for me. Well, it is. So let me, and it's a little messy in here, but I have website and then I have, you know, different I, uh, written notes of, of things. And I know that these notes, while they reference um, outside opinions and articles and everything, that they, that they, that they, I don't mind having them here, so I can just always find them, and that's in, you know, my spaces section. So if you feel like you want to silo knowledge for whatever reason, that's a good time to, to use spaces. And then vaults is like you really, really, really don't care to have overlapping information. So spaces is kind of like a soft border, uh, because it's a folder as opposed to vaults, which is a, a definitely a hard border. <laughs>